What's up everyone? I'm Raina. And I'm Phil. And welcome back to One Minute Board Games. Today we are going to be judging board games on their cover art. Yep. So we each have compiled a few box cover arts that we personally haven't really seen before. And the other person is going to talk about what they think the game is about just based on the cover box art alone. Yeah, so they can talk about anything from the mechanics they think are in the game, the general backstory or lore of the game, how they think the game plays overall, anything that they can grasp just based on the front The box. front cover, not the back, not, <laughs> not the, the sides, sides, just the front. Yeah, super yeah. excited to try this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start things off. Phil has his laptop here. He's going to go ahead and show me the box cover art. And we'll go ahead and put it up here for you as well so you can try to figure it out along with me. Yep. All right. So here we go. First one. Oh, so this game is called Hoax. And right off the bat, I'm getting major Mysterium vibes. I feel like the characters look like the same cartoon art as Mysterium. Um, we have a lot of different characters here. We have a chef on the left, um, got a butler on the right. We have the gardener in the bottom right. Um, I'm getting really social deduction game vibes. I'm kind of going off of like Mysterium as well. And, you know, with social deduction games typically comes the party game setting. So the story that I'm kind of getting from this is that there has been a murder in the household. And you have all these different characters who are all sus. You got the chef, the butler, the gardener. You have the stepmom in the top right. And I don't know, the guard in the top left. And everyone just pointing fingers at each other like, who did it? And this is a game for two to eight, maybe, maybe three to eight players. I feel like that's typically kind of the ballpark for what party games are. And that is going to be my guess. That's uh, that's honestly pretty pretty good. <laughs> like I think, I mean, I I chose this box cover art because it's like it gives, you know, a, a, almost like a complete story yeah. about what the game is about. It's giving me huge. Um, what's that movie with Daniel Craig? Oh, Knives Out. Yeah, <laughs> is this totally not it just is. like Knives that's Out? That's what I was envisioning. In a board game, uh -huh. right? So, uh, the description for this game is basically. In hoax, three to six players, which you pretty much got, I mean, three to six, uh, each take on a secret identity of the member of Vargas's family or household. Uh, no matter what your identity, your goal is to eliminate all your com competitors by catching them in a lie. Ooh. But making a false accusation will take you out of the game. That's so pretty cool. Yeah, so it's really all about, I guess, um, I think it's kind of like coup vibes mm -hmm. where you have a secret identity, but you can use other people's abilities. Uh -huh. And I think people have to catch you in a lie. And yeah, yeah, I guess I was really focused on like the general vibe that the cover art was giving me. I completely missed the I name of yeah. the game, which yeah. is hoax, which is literally <laughs> a lie. Uh -huh. But no, I guess, you know, if you murdered someone, you're lying about it. So that's true. But this game seems really cool, actually. Yeah, I know. It's I it's by it Fantasy Flight. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm interested. I feel like it might just be more like coup, mm -hmm. but more of a bigger production. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely interested because the box art was super cool for this one. That's that why I chose a, it. Yeah, that was a good first. I'm kind of doubting the ones that I chose. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> uh, <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> yikes. <laughs> All right, I'm up next. Are you let's ready? See what, uh, let's see what Raina has right. in store for me. And here we go. Oh, oh my goodness. I Do we not have this game? This is a game that we actually <laughs> okay. own, but yeah. we haven't played it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm hoping that you don't know wow. how it plays. Yeah, I have no idea. But, <laughs> okay, so this is a, a area... Area so Isle? This is actually a Portuguese name and oh. it's pronounced a Ahio. A Ahio. Ahio. Oh, something interesting. Yeah, something along those lines. Okay, so the box cover is giving me party vibes, so it has to be a party game, right? And if it's not a party game, um, you got a lot of explaining to do. Uh, let's see. So, a lot of rowdy. Oh man, this is giving me like Where's Waldo vibes, you know? It's like super busy everywhere and you're just trying to find where Waldo is. I'm trying to look for him right now and I don't see him, which is... Uh. All right, so it also looks like there's uh, polyominal shapes, the Tetris pieces, and 
There's people dancing around it. Ooh. So definitely tile lane. <laughs> Has to be tile lane because of course Reina tile lane. Um, let's see. I wonder how many players this can play up to. Uh, I I want to say since there are tiles, it probably can't be that many people. But I still want to say that it might be a lot. So I'm going to say like maybe two to six range. Um, and maybe you're just trying to form the best party. Uh, creating the best good vibes action with the with the polyomino shapes that you get and uh, yeah that's my guess yeah i think that's a, that's a solid guess i think this is one of the easier ones for sure because it has all the polyominoes on the box cover art so mm -hmm. i give you something to work with yeah yeah and so let me go ahead and just read the description of the game yes so a hail is the name given to traditional portuguese summer celebrations where people take to the streets of a neighborhood to eat drink and have fun mm. this is a game for one to four players dang it yeah. <laughs> that was pretty <laughs> off <laughs> a wow. little bit and in this game, you're trying to make your neighborhood event the most popular by attracting visitors to the celebration. Okay. Which is good. I think I got that yeah, part. Yeah, everyone's partying there. So, you know, it's a good interpretation. Uh, this is an abstract strategy puzzle game. So you, you are going to have tile placement games mm -hmm. because um, you are trying to fit your different patrons, which are in the shape of polyominoes, yeah. into your party, and you have to do it strategically in order to score a certain amount of points. Mm, okay. Yes, I think you were pretty good. That was pretty yeah, spot I, on. Yeah, I should have known it probably was about to, like, four. Just, you know, like, tiling yeah. games, you can't have that many tiles. Mm. Um, but I think I think the partying threw me off. I was just like, there's a party, and maybe, you know, tiling for a lot of people hasn't been done before, mm -hmm. and they were the first to do it, so... That's a good idea, though. I think I'm, I'm going to keep that idea up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'm ready for my next one. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. I love this. I know. This, this is called Flatline. I'm just going to read what's on the box cover. A flea. Is that? Oh, fuse. A fuse <laughs> after shocking. So this looks really awesome because if you don't know, I'm a nursing student, and so I think anything kind of healthcare related is pretty cool. Uh, we have, you know, this woman in, it looks like this little, like, pod here in the corner, which kind of functions as a hospital bed, and we have other guys coming in, like, wait! And this little blue person on the left-hand side looks like they're dead. Um, it definitely looks like they're in a spaceship. Okay, so now that I have the general, um, you know, vicinity, not the vicinity, the, I mean, the where? setting. Okay. <laughs> So now that I have a feel for the setting of the game, let's get into mechanics. So this is not going to make sense, but I'm going to go with it anyway. I feel like this game has dice chucking in it. Because um, on the little pod right here in the bottom right hand corner, there's like, it's a grid of squares and those could be dice. And just in general, this game reminds me of that real time pandemic game that we play, which has a bunch of dice rolling. Um, because it was set in a plane and you know you're trying to cure these diseases and so that's where I'm drawing the dice rolling from. Um, I think this is, it could be a real time game because you have to hurry up and cure your patients before they die. And so to put that all together, Flatline is a real time game for two to four players. I don't think this is the type of game that will have a solo playing mode. And in this game, you get patients who are dying from stuff that went on in space. I don't know what's going on up there. And you have to try your best to roll all your dice so that you could roll the correct icons in order to save them. Um, I don't think that's correct, but that's what I got. <laughs> what? I'm impressed. What? <laughs> that is... Pretty much spot on, <laughs> uh, like literally pretty much spot on. Wow. I'm... <laughs> All right, so let's just go ahead and go into it. This is the description. Flatline is a cooperative dice game set in the Fuse universe. Players must roll their dice and work 
to combine them with other players in order to properly treat arriving patients. Every round, players race against a one-minute timer, real time, and must deal with the needs of wounded crew members as well as other emergencies within the ER. Time is running out. How... That that just goes to show like how important a box cover yeah, is, right? Wow. So have, you've never even seen this game. I've never even heard of this game. It totally looks like she has <laughs> seen it before. But yeah, like wow. That's I, so crazy. I really did not think that I was correct. I have yeah. tears in my eyes right wow. now. <laughs> I, I was looking uh, at the screen and I noticed the little like grid system with the dice uh -huh. and I was like wondering if she was gonna get that, but wow. She did, and she totally did the exact same thing that I did, which was I thought of um, pandemic rapid response. Oh yeah! So wow, she like nailed this one, oh. and also great job to, you know, flatline for the box car yeah. cover because it really told the entire story right there. Exactly, you already know like what kind of game you're getting into just by looking at it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Nice. All right, well, after that round, I don't think I'm going to get anywhere close to what uh, she's going to get, but I will try my best. All right, and try your best with this one right here. Oh, I have heard of this. I've seen the box cover art for this, but I have no idea how this plays. Stuffed Fables. Okay, it's an adventure book game, so it feels like it's definitely more like more of a kid's game or kid-friendly game and you have to go on an adventure. So what kind of mechanisms can you use to get kids into board gaming? Hmm. I, oh, Stuff Fables, an adventure book game. Okay. How would you incorporate letting kids play? Oh man, I've heard of other kids games and they have like, you know, some deduction in them, but this doesn't really look like it's deduction. Oh man, I don't know. It also looks like they're, they have grabbed just like a hodgepodge of stuff, you know, like the piggy over here has the button shield. So maybe, oh, how am I so bad at this? I feel it definitely has to be like a story game, right? So I'm guessing you are gonna try to go through a story and there's cards involved and uh you know having uh, maybe not a mystery i don't oh man maybe defeating cute little monsters with your cards maybe there might be some set collection going on with this one um but i i would have to imagine it has to be some kind of card game and you're going on an adventure that's uh, that's all I got. <laughs> that was honestly, that was pretty good. Okay. All right. So Stuffed Fables is a cooperative adventure game. Yep. Where you are taking on the roles of stuffed animals trying to save the child that they love from monsters, which Whoa. you got okay. underneath the bed. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. So this is there is no bed in this at all. <laughs> <laughs> so this game has mechanisms of storytelling. Okay. Role Story. playing, which kind of goes hand in hand with storytelling. Don't think I got that. Variable player powers, so each of the different, you know, stuffed animals. That, that makes sense. Has a different power. Makes sense. And lastly, dice rolling. Oh, I didn't think mm -hmm. there would be dice rolling. Are there cards in this game? Do you know? Um, it did not say that in the brief description that I read on Board Game Geek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Possibly. There probably are some sort of cards in there, but yeah. I don't think it was very card um, dependent or heavy. So it's dice rolling. Is it like kind of like dice matching, like Yahtzee? style i don't know <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> um oh, yeah. but this isn't really like a kids game i think it's it's like family friendly i think the age group yeah, was ages friendly. eight and over oh yeah yeah super cute cover mm -hmm. all right and i'm all ready for my next one here we go here this we one. go eh, yeah she'll she'll probably get this one. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is a board game. It looks like the cover of a book. It looks like the cover of a book that is 800 pages long and has 8 point times new Roman font. Founding Fathers, a game of strategy and statesmanship at the Constitutional Convention. At the Constitu Constitutional the, Convention. This is... Oh. You, uh, are you reciting the Hamilton soundtrack I'm right not, now? I'm not. All I'm playing in my head right now is Hamilton. 
Um, I don't know how to describe these types of games. Like, it gives me, like, coin game vibes, you know? Like, I don't know what coin game vibes are. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, the, the they're, like, kind of long, like, really crunchy, chunky games, usually based on um, a time period that happened in the hmm. world. Mm-hmm. Um, but what kind of mechanics? I don't know. Drawing a blank? Are you stumped? Did we finally get her? I just, I've never seen a board game like this before <laughs> in my life. Okay. What can you, what can you, So I like, feel what like do you picture when you think right, of Founding Fathers? I am picturing the actual Founding Fathers. And back in that time, there was a lot of war and a lot of politics. So this game probably has to do with war and politics. And with war comes area control, you know, troops on a map kind of games. And I think, okay, let's say that you take on the role of one of the founding fathers and you are trying... At the Constitu Constitutional Convention, what happened there? Constitution. They were trying to get stuff passed as we formed our new country. I took an, an A push class <laughs> in high school once, you know? <laughs> okay, so this is like each founding father has like a, a bill or a, a legislature that they're trying to get passed and they have to try and get it passed by, I don't know, arguing maybe? Or just like using like different like strategic cards in order to further their um, their goal, their objective. And that's going to be my final answer. Wow. All right. She, like, got there at the end. She <laughs> she, she was kind of, like, kind of stumbling, but then she was like, what happened at the Constitutional <laughs> Convention? And she's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> they were trying to make the Constitution. Uh, all right. So the description for this game is, um, well, the goal here is to be the founding father with the most renown at the end of the game, which consists of making the U.S. Constitution. Each round, an article of the Constitution is put up for consideration, which is either a Federalist, Anti-Federalist, Big State, or Small State issue. Players have a hand of three delegate cards that represent their respective states and also have a special ability. Players may use these cards, use these special abilities, use the cards to vote or against the issue uh, that is under consideration, or to try, try and claim tokens in each of the four types of issues. So when a round ends, the issue either passes or is flipped to the other side. So you pretty much got it. It's, yeah, it's once essentially, I, yeah. Like, once I figured out, once I zoned in on the Constitutional Convention, I was like, oh, yeah. what were they doing there? Mm -hmm. The game actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. I was thinking that. I was like, hmm. I mean, I really dug Hamilton. Like, who who doesn't yeah. dig Hamilton, Get off right? our channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but when I saw this, I was like, is this all about trying to, you know, draft mm -hmm. the Declaration? and Constitution. Like, yeah, the... What did I say? Declaration. <laughs> <laughs> Declaration of Independence. <laughs> um, but yes, making the Constitution and passing what is going to go into the Constitution. So wow. you you got it. I got there in the end. She, she, she kind of thought just, it was about I, war. I, I was, was like, just eh. so thrown off by this cover art. Yeah. Just, it looks like... It's just a giant bust. Yeah, it looks... Yeah, it's a giant bust and a lot of empty negative space. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But... I mean, she got there. She just had to look at Constitution. I just had to convention. think. It's the hardest thing to do sometimes. <laughs> All right, here we go. This what? is probably the last one. Mm -hmm. Maybe? We'll see. Last we'll see. but not least. Yeah. It's ended on with a bang. <laughs> Let's hope. Wait, I've, I've played this. You played this? <laughs> i played oh. this game. Uh, is it good? <laughs> I, 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 it looks fun. I thought it was pretty cool. Okay. You can, like, gather resources and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, take two. <laughs> All right. Here we go. This is uh, take two of <laughs> the last challenge. This is why we came up with backup, just in case. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is one is a bit abstract, so I'm, I'm excited to see oh, what God. you come up with. Uh, oh my, what is this? <laughs> durian. I mean, durian is the, the stinky fruit. It's the super spiky stinky fruit. So it has to do with that because obviously you see it in the center. There's like a, a durian fruit. Uh, that also looks like a monkey, so it looks like, uh, you know, it's uh, animals 
trying to get uh, get the most durian fruit to eat. They eat durian, right? They probably do. They probably do. I mean, durian itself is, I think it's very tasty, mm -hmm. but the smell, the smell. But monkeys don't care about the smell. They just like to eat. So I'm going to say it's, hmm, I don't think it's... It's probably not. Hmm. What I kind don't of know mechanic? if this is apparent by the shape of the. the it's graphic. like an oink game. It is an oink game. I knew it. Mm -hmm. It's like super small. I'm gonna just assume that it's like a like a card game, and you're just card drafting and trying to get the most durian cards in there. Um, you know, oink games they don't really have too many pieces, so I want to just say it's a. It's a it's a it's a card drafting game with a little bit of like durian fruit pieces. That's my guess. Yeah. Maybe like one to uh, two to two to two to five two to five two to five. <laughs> That's my guess. So that was that was pretty good. I'm surprised that well I'm not surprised that does look like a monkey, but I feel like I wasn't. It kind of gave me um stormtrooper vibes. I was thinking that when I first saw it, but then I saw durian and I was like, okay, yeah, that's probably not Darth Vader. <laughs> uh. You used logic. <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> so in durian, you play as a jungle fruit shop clerk. Huh. So I assume that this gorilla, shop this ape, is the clerk. shop clerk okay. <laughs> who starts selling to customers without checking their inventory because you're banking or you're hoping that the other staff members ha have checked the inventory already. So that you're, might, you're probably thinking, like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, this is a deduction, oh. hand management, push your luck game, where you're trying to basically use information that's given to you so that you don't oversell fruit. Wow. Yeah, so you kind of have to, like, everyone probably has an idea of how much fruit is left, and so you're trying to sell as much as you can without overselling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I definitely did not get that. <laughs> that is that that is definitely really hard to, to figure out mm -hmm. just from the box art. But I think um, that's how most point games are. Yeah. They don't really have the most, like... It's really abstract box art, but also because the bo the box is like it's this like small. Like, but yeah. they do have really pretty box art, and I knew that I wanted to go ahead and put an oink game box art in there because I wanted to see what you could come up with. But you did pretty well. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, did, I did okay. I, I wasn't. Eh. You know, there's some cards in there. Yeah, <laughs> there's some cards in there. <laughs> some hand management. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and that wraps up today's video. How do you think that it went? You know, I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Like, you know, you don't really. Uh, like board games these days you're always looking for like the most mainstream or the most famous ips mm -hmm. you know marvel disney you got the witcher one coming out mm -hmm. and it's just you know all these super well-known ips and then just going through like the far pages of bgg mm -hmm. it's like you can find some really cool games that you would have never seen before yeah i feel like i didn't expect this challenge this exercise to interest me in all the games that we talked about but yeah. i i can 100 percent say that i i am interested in checking out all the games that we talked about today yeah and i think they're probably games that i wouldn't have checked out before probably because based on the cover art and i think like you were touching on before a lot of us get lost and you know what's the newest hottest thing that's out there that everyone's talking about mm -hmm. and i also just think that like the board game cover art how much it actually can tell um or tell you what the game is about just mm -hmm. just based on the art alone and i think that's super interesting it's not something that i really thought about before um but with this exercise you know you get to see like all the little nuances that artists mm -hmm. put you know the work they put into getting these beautiful trying, yeah. cover arts and trying to evoke what kind of emotion you get when you play the game mm -hmm. you know so that was super super interesting for me. a lot of newfound respect for artists for yeah, board games definitely. which i think you know we could all go ahead and do mm -hmm. well thank you all for watching today i hope yeah. that you enjoyed this type of video let us know what you thought about in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one bye bye